Hazel, what do you do when your son or your daughter brings home someone that, well, let's just put it politely, <laughs> you hate them <laughs> or you're just not real fond of them. Yes. So that's our topic today on Life Talks. My name is Dan. I'm with Ben. We're the teaching pastors at Life Fellowship outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. We are in the middle of a series on leaving a good family legacy. We're talking hard topics, many of which have been suggested to us by you, the listeners, asking us to address some of these things. We've just finished two episodes on dating. We're going to hit this third one. Ben, what do you do? Whenever they bring home someone that's just not your cup of tea. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for joining us today on Life Talks. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think that this is one of those issues that can be very um, explosive. And and you can do more harm than good many times when you're trying to correct these kinds of issues. Uh I can tell you what not to do, all right? The first thing I would say what not to do is create a forbidden love situation. Mm, Romeo okay? and Juliet. One of the things that, and, and I know they wouldn't mind me sharing this story, but but my family went through something very similar with like this with my sister. You know, I've, there's there's four kids, three boys, one girl. Uh, my dad always said, it. you know, the amount of energy it took to, to raise my daughter or, or his daughter was the same energy of the three sons. But um, my sister, Trisha, started liking a guy, I think it was eighth or ninth grade. And um, my parents just did not like him. And, you know, they just thought he, I mean, they, they liked his family. They just didn't like him. They thought it was kind of a punk. And, and, but my sister just fell in love with him. And my parents did everything to like, discourage this to, you know, no, you know, try to do every, but what they did was they created this forbidden love. And what happened was, uh, when you make something forbidden, you make it enticing. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they created was, uh, this situation where, um, they, you know, they try to, they, they would sneak behind parents back and they, they and, and here's the funny story. All right. So, so long story is, um, they both went on different paths, but they're now married today. And I love my brother-in-law, Luke. He's he's a great it guy. It was Luke? Yeah, it was Luke. Oh, but, but, that story took a, a, a turn but, I was not anticipating. But, I, but we all joke about none of us liked Luke when he was in high school. But, you know, Luke is a, you know, God really got a hold of Luke's life, I think, somewhere in college. And he he became a different person. But they both had to... It was a roller coaster ride, and it was a very emotional time. I mean, it was a hard time for our family. But um, and now I, I can honestly look back and say I'm thankful that my sister has the husband that she has, and I wouldn't want anyone different for for her than Luke. But during that time, my parents learned a lot. Is man, do not create this forbidden love thing because it, it, it's like throwing gasoline on this tiny little fire. Mm. Um, that's what not to do. The the other thing. Uh, to combat that, I I was talking to one of our, one of our one of my, my wife and I had friends uh, in our twenties. We went to church with, and she was my wife's friend was telling a story when she was in high school and dating a guy that her mom did not like, and she was a single mom, so she was just dealing with this on her own. She didn't like this guy, but she decided um, I think he's kind of you know this guy I don't like. So, but what she does, I want my daughter to see this. So she kept inviting him over all the time. And she almost brought him over so much that the daughter was like, I'm kind of sick of him and I don't want to, <laughs> don't want to date him. But the whole idea is she, her philosophy was the more I get her around him and set how she, if she can see him for what he really is, she'll see, I, I don't really like this guy anymore. And that's exactly what happened. Again, I'm not saying that's the best strategy. I'm just sharing with you what was a strategy that worked for, for a, a, a family situation. Um, Another situation I would say do not do is do not demand your son or daughter stop or, or break up, okay? You can do something to manipulate emotional, emotional manipulation, forcing to say, you will not date, blah, 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 and you can do that. You can do that. You can pull that, that mom and dad card out when they're at a certain age to be like, you will not do this, okay? Um but I, I will say this, you will, you will damage your relationship with your child in the process. You may get your way, but you will do harm to either your relationship. And so uh, you can, if they bring someone home that you don't like, you can, you know, let them know, 
I, I don't think they're a great person. I don't think that they're, I think you can do a lot better. And there's a lot of things you can do, but what I would say is do not force their hand to make a decision um, that they, then all of a sudden they will, they will hide things from you more than ever. The other thing I would say is do not create a forbidden love thing. With that said, um, I think there are some things that you can do. And what you can do is you can pray a lot. And what I would even say is you should fast a lot. Uh, one of the things my wife and I have done when we are in a situation with our kids, and it's, it could be for a variety of reasons, but Liz and I have learned the power of fasting and have learned that when you pray and fast, God really works. And so, um, I would I would encourage a parent if you if your child is in a situation where you're like, man, I do not like where this is going. I don't like this person. Um, you can always ask God. I, there's a there's a story I read in in the book of Judges. I'm going through Judges in my devotional time, and uh, it's a story of Abimelech. It's, Abimelech is one of um, uh, 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 Gideon's sons, and he kills his seventy brothers, and and he tries to set up himself as the king, and he does. And then the people of Shechem are there, and and it says God brought a spirit of dissension between Abimelech and the people of Shechem. And I'm like, God, that's a that's a good prayer to praise. <laughs> <laughs> and God, bring a spirit of dissension between these two people, because you see, and again, I I I think I mentioned this in the first episode. As a parent, you can see things. And if you're a young person listening to this, listen to my words. Your mom and dad see things in people that make that can make them a, either a good spouse or a bad spouse. When you are in love and you're in this relationship thing, you only see what this person, oh, but we have such a good time together, or they make me laugh, or we have fun, or da-da-da-da, and they're not seeing the the important qualities that are required for to make a great spouse. Mm-hmm. That's what mom and dad are seeing. And so you've got to remind your son and daughter, I can see things that you can't see. And uh, you're going to have to trust me on this. But it has to be their choice. Because at a certain age, you you... And it's even more complicated when they're in college, right? Mm-hmm. Because when they're in college, you're not there. You're not there, and so all you can do is give the best advice you can. But you got to be honest with them at some point, and you got to pray for that open door. Because if you try to tell them what you think about this other person when they're not when they're in no mood to hear it, you're not going to get very far. But when there's an open door and pray again, that's why it's pray. Pray God, give me an open door to share share this. Um, do it in a spirit of love, in a spirit of grace, but spirit of truth to say, this is what I see. This is what I believe is going to happen if you end up marrying this person. Um, but ultimately, it is your decision. And if you decide to go down this road, that you're going to have to live with the consequences. I mean, that's the kind of, at some point, you have to let your kids feel the weight of responsibility of their own decisions. And so I, I think all of those are are very important of of how to communicate with your son or daughter in that in that moment. Uh, one of the, one of the things that I think <clears throat> is valuable if you want to avoid future conflict uh, with someone that your you know your child is bringing home with romantic intentions, perhaps even leading to marriage, is to have worked for many many years in developing a relationship that is so close between you and your child mm. that your child does not want someone who would come in and come between you yeah. and them. Yeah. Um that that becomes you know it was very very important for me to have my mother approve of the woman I was going yeah. to marry. Yeah. I didn't I didn't say, "Well, mom, do I have your permission to marry this girl?" <laughs> but she but she had a way of letting me know. Yeah. And you know, after I introduced her to my the woman who had become my wife, she came to me and she goes, you're not asking my my opinion, but let me just tell you some things I've observed. He said, she's a strong woman and you're a strong guy and you need a strong woman. Otherwise, you're going to treat your wife potentially like a doormat. Mm. 
And I watched her stand up to you a couple of times. She goes, I really like that. Mm. Uh, then she said, I also noticed that, you know, after, after dinner, she got up and she helped. She, in other words, she's got a servant mm. spirit. She said, I mm. really like, so for me, those words were words of affirmation and endorsement, yeah. Yeah. even though at that time I'm 22, 23 years old, 22 years old. Um, I, you know, having that approval because I valued what my mom thought. Yeah. At the same time, if my mom had probably said to me, "Ugh." What are you doing, dude? You know, <laughs> that I don't know that it would have caused me to break up with her, but it would have caused me to reflect and maybe slow down on the journey yes, and maybe reach yes. the conclusion myself. Yeah, totally. The other thing I think you can do is you have to look at it incrementally because when they're younger, you do have more control than Absolutely, when they're older. Absolutely, 100%. So you, you may have policies about, um, by the way, I believe this is important beyond, rem- I, I believe this is important for friends mm. um, that, you know, I think a smart parent screens the influences in their kid's life. Mm, and absolutely. one of the most powerful influences is their friends. So if you've got a kid who is, you know, you you know he's trouble mm. or she's trouble, you, you can just tell their value system and everything come, coming from their background is completely different than yours. The, you need you need to act, but you need to take your kids up front. Look, you know what? Until you're 16, I'm going to be calling the shot about who gets to come over for dinner, who gets yeah, to spend the 100%. night, who gets to play on, yeah. you know, um, and, and then also encourage relationships with people that have those values. Mm. Invite families over that have yes. kids near your kid's age yeah. that you feel like, hey, you know, again, you're not trying to set them up for marriage, but you are setting them up for friendships, relationships. Yes. Um, and what you're also saying with that is, I like this kind of yeah. th- this 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 kind of person. You might not ever say, "Oh, I like this 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 daughter or the son of the, yeah. this other family." But what you are saying is, if not her, someone like her. Yeah. If not him, someone like him. So so many bad mistakes that kids kids make when it comes to picking friends and um, potential spouses is desperation. Mm. Rather than be alone, they'll lower their standards. Hundred percent. If there's a way to convince your kids to have high standards and keep yep. them, it is. I said this to myself. It is better to be single than to be married to the wrong person. Oh man, and that it, is such good wisdom. Yeah, but they don't see that because no. they think well, they think single means alone, and it doesn't yeah. necessarily. Yeah. But even if it did mean alone, it's better to be a, alone than to be at war. Because one of the one of the most painful things for any human being to feel is when they are in a marriage and feel alone. Oh, it's it's, yeah. it's it's one thing when okay, like I don't want to be single and alone, but there, there's even a, a depth of aloneness that a married person feels that is, I don't know if it's more painful, I, I but I I do know this because there's that some rejection, there's some failure, there's, there's yeah. really it's a, it's a level of of pain that when you talk to someone that's in that kind of marriage, um, the regret they feel is almost immense to the the per a person who's just feeling alone and i i think that when we you and i have ex- because we have seen that mm-hmm. we can tell our kids if you you can marry that person but i'm just telling you right now this these are the issues you're going to deal with and and you're going to at some point you're going to wake up and be like man that i don't know if i want to be with a person like this what i always tell my kids you want your spouse to have two major qualities there's a lot of <laughs> There's a lot that are good, but I said these two have to be non-negotiables. Number one, they have to love Jesus. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, that's because if they, I think I mentioned this in their, our first episode, if they love Jesus first and most, they will love you well. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's that's what I know. Number two, you want to marry someone who will be a phenomenal partner in raising children with. Yep. Everything else is secondary to those two things. Mm-hmm. You want someone who loves Jesus, who who worships Jesus, and you want someone who is man, they are they are they love children and they will be a phenomenal partner and influence to your children. Um the only the only thing I put close to that list is they are teachable, mm-hmm. that they're humble, that they have a sense of I know I'm not perfect, I know I've got flaws, but I'm working on it. And mm-hmm. when I when I, I ask for for influence to help me change. I want to see those kinds of qualities. And so you can you can you can do what you can to prep your kids for that, but th- there's no guarantee that when you teach them these things that they will, you know, they've all been smitten before by things you're like, "Uh, eh, that's I'm not sure that's that's a good thing, but you've got to just make remind them of those things that that you the, the values that that you find. And one of the things you mentioned 
about when your mom was talking about Julie is she was specific with her praise. Mm-hmm. And when you have a kid, if you have a child that is that's dating someone that you might not be too too keen on, you know, don't just be, well, I don't like him. Mm-hmm. You know, be specific. When I saw him or her do this, when I saw them, how they treated you in this way, that's a red flag for me, and here's why. I mean, you give give specific reasons so that they understand it's not just your opinion. Yeah. You know, it's it's principled based. And the other thing you can do in those situations is ask questions. Mm. So, like when she when when she called you that name in front of me, did that did that embarrass you at all? Yeah. Yeah. And yep. and then let it go. I mean, unless unless they're just dumb as a box of rocks, they're gonna figure out what you're going <laughs> where you're going on that. If if you know, and ask those kind of questions, not in a manipulative, you know, shrewish mother-in-law way, mm-hmm. but rather than just, oh, I just, I just, I, 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 here's something I noticed, and I don't know if it's a big deal or not, yeah. but, um, you know, I, you know, I noticed that they never hold the door for you. They never, they never, like, wait until you're finished before. Yeah. They, yeah it, is that a pattern, or yeah. did, did it, is he nervous? Yeah. You know, you know, asking those kind of questions almost casually. And, and hopefully what that does, it puts it on there. If it's on your radar, you want to put it on their radar. A hundred percent. That's yeah. good. You know, the <clears throat> the other thing too that I, I just sometimes say is when possible, build bridges, don't build walls. Mm. Um, and one of the things that when my kids have decided they're going to love somebody, not before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I don't need the drama. Yeah. But when they decided they're going to, then I try to love them too, because I believe love is a decision. hundred um, percent. And there've been times when that's easy and times when that's hard. Um, but, but the reality is I want to be a voice in their life. I want to be somebody that they value. I, I want to be somebody they do not see as a threat, mm. but as a resource. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, different kids have different personalities and you know, maybe they have a really strong relationship with their parents. They don't need that from somebody else, but if they have a bad relationship with their parents, sometimes they're looking for that in an yeah. in-law. Yes. So ask the Lord to give you some wisdom on how you can bless your children and their spouses or future spouses. Mm. Because there's there's going to be times when the door will open and you'll have the privilege of speaking into them if you've built a bridge. Mm-hmm. But if you built a wall, if you've issued ultimatums, if you've if you've been angry, um, those kind of things, sometimes those will take years and years to get over, if ever. Yeah, and I think the the other hard part is if if your son or daughter ends up marrying this person, mm-hmm. um, all all you can do is uh, you know pray and, and like I, I like what you said is building those bridges and just saying listen this is the person my son or daughter's married mm-hmm. I gotta make the best of the situation yeah, at yeah. this point you know well, certainly the stupidest thing you'll ever do is continue to undermine them after. yeah once they say I do it's you, done yeah you've got to be you've got to be team that couple then absolutely you know what I mean because there's do, no separate that's one that's right you've got to do everything in your power to make sure that marriage does work yeah. and um then you start praying differently yeah. so well, I, you know, one of the one of the things that um, I I think that parents have to use a lot of wisdom in is that as you age and as your kids age, you have to change the channel that you use when you're communicating with mm. your kids. Mm-hmm. When, you know, when they're younger, you can give them specific directives, and as they get older, it's more like general suggestions. And then finally, you got to respect their adulthood and yeah. their independence, yeah. particularly if they're living out on their own and so forth. And then you get to become the sage. You get to say, hey, you know, here's what I think. You may not think this way, but I'm just going to give you my two cents. I've used this illustration before. I I think it just was brilliant. My mother used it on us, basically said to us as we became adults and we got married, uh, she she sat down with both of us and said, I got a couple of policies I just want you to be aware of. Number one is you're not welcome in my house unless somebody's getting beaten. And if they get beaten, you can come to my house. Otherwise, don't come back to my house Mm. uh, if you're fighting. He said, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be a referee. Right. Uh, The other thing uh, she, she said is, you know, I raised this kid. I powdered their behind. I spanked them when they needed it. I fed them. I paid their bills and so forth for 18, 20 years, whatever it was. And that bought me a one-time ticket for the rest of their life to be able to give them whatever I think. It's not a two-time ticket. It's a one-time ticket on any topic. Yeah. So if I ever see something that concerns me, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you once. And if I try to tell you twice, you stop me. Mm-hmm. But if I get to, I'm gonna, and, and then she'll literally say, um, I'm going to cash my ticket right now and tell you what I think. And then after that, it's your call. Yeah. 
I value that. I value knowing what my mom thinks, even if I do something different. Yep. And and so have kind of like those family talks. Have a plan for how you hope to engage yeah. with your adult children. Yeah. So. One more thing as we end this, I would just say this. Pray now for your kids' spouse. Oh, yes. <clears throat> spouses. Um, you want to be able to make that a regular part that you and your wife or husband pray regularly for. Even if you have, they're small. I mean, God, please let my children fall in love with someone who loves Jesus mm-hmm. and pray, pray fervently for your future, uh, you know, daughter, sons-in-laws that they would, they'd be, they would add life and, and faith to your, to your home. And so, uh, to your family lineage. And I think that those are just all things I would, I would encourage parents. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, but you know, that preventative type of prayers, uh, I, I don't know how God's going to answer all of them, but I just know this. If, if we've done all that we can do, um, at some point we have to let our, our children make the decisions that they're going to make. Yep. Make the decisions early. Make the teaching early. The earlier you get started, the longer talks you have when they're young, the less fewer tears hopefully you'll have That's when right. you get older. Amen. Well, as always, it's great to have you all listening with us on Life Talks. Uh, we hope that you'll uh, share with us any ideas you ever have about an episode you'd like for us to cover. You can do that by writing us at lifetalks at lifecharlotte.com. As always, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time.